Hey everybody, you're watching Model Railroad Minute, an inside look showcasing the people and projects of the world's greatest hobby, model railroading. I'm Don Trink. In this episode, we're back at my club, the Carquinez Model Railroad Society in Crockett, California to showcase the animation work of one of our members, Steve Lowens. Steve has done a considerable amount of work with Arduinos on the Crockett Central Railroad. Arduinos are solid state devices that can be programmed to control motors and LED lights. Steve uses these devices to create scenes that come alive with movement. First, we'll show you an example of an Arduino controlled traffic light. Then, Steve will take us on a tour of his work on the layout. Let's take a look. So Steve, this is a sample uh, breadboard that you've got here. Why don't you explain what's going to go on here? Sure. Um... This is an Arduino. It's uh, the Arduino Uno, and it's about the size of a credit card. Um, along the edges are different input and output slots um, connecting to a temporary breadboard. And this is what we typically use to test out a circuit and wire it up and keep playing around until we actually get it right. Uh, the components we have here, this is a photo transistor which can be used as a sensor. We have three LEDs and we've got a little servo here. And what the Arduino is doing right now is it's waiting for the command. And the command is simply to cover the sensor and that sets off this test sequence where we show our traffic light going and the uh, servo goes back and forth and it will keep doing that until we uncover the sensor. All of these are the basic things that we use to do our animation in Colfax and Sacramento and it's a great way of uh, getting things started without making mistakes on the layout. So I noticed that you started out with some of the simple stuff uh, like wind turbines and some of the animated signs that you can get down at the Budweiser plant. Sure. Um, a lot of what we have with the layout are commercial things that anybody can buy. So we have a wind turbine down there that's a faller instrument. It, you plug it in and it runs and it looks like a real turbine out on the Tehachapi Mountains or something. Mm -hmm. uh, the Budweiser sign, we use a lot of Miller Engineering animated signs. Uh, they have them for any situation. This one is a real good replica of the Budweiser sign that's out in Sassoon City right now. So it's a perfect match. Nice. You've done work here at the Sacramento um, City with lights and with uh, animation and also over at Colfax. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what we've got over here in the Sacramento City that we want to showcase that's okay. using Arduinos. Sure. Well, why don't we talk about Sacramento itself to start with. Um, we have a real small area to show a city of a million people. So we decided first, what's the most important building in Sacramento? And of course, it's the state capitol. And so we have the state capitol down at the end there. And what leads to the state capitol? It's the Capitol Mall, one of the wide boulevards in the city. And that requires traffic lights. Mm. So traffic lights is where we use our Arduino. And we have three intersections here. They're all coordinated. The lights will turn, as you see, yellow, red, going right down the street. Uh, we have operating walk weight signals. We have mast arms on our signals. We have combined poles with mast arms and our street lights. So the whole thing is kind of created to look like a main boulevard in a, in a major street. And it's all done simply by blinking lights in the proper sequence using Arduino. Now these walk signals are really impressive. I've seen, of course, you know, traffic lights before, but those are really done. How, how did you do those? Those are all custom made. Um, the panels, the walk and wait signals, are uh, decals, decals that come off of an ALPS printer. Um, those are glued on top of a couple of pieces of styrofoam tubing. And then there are two LEDs, one orange and one white behind it. The LEDs hook up to the Arduino, and we have a watt wait signal. Hmm. Um, I liked what we have in the front are kind of traditional old fashioned walk weight. Way in the back there, I, I started doing some research on 
walk weight signals. And it turns out that the famous walking man that you have on all your traffic signals today, every country has a different one. And so you will see back there that the walking man comes on and he's solid for oh, maybe 10 seconds or so. And then he starts blinking and it starts blinking slowly and then it starts getting a little faster and almost becomes a running man and then the hand comes up. That's a European signal, but because of you, the way you can blink lights with an Arduino, you can create that magic right here on the layout. Now is this done with a Uno 3, R3? This is done with the Mega 2560. Um, we have a lot of LEDs here and every uh, Arduino port really can only handle two LEDs. And so we need a lot of different ports in order to support the whole scene. Mm. Nice. I noticed some other stuff that you've got is the, the uh, school bus over there. The with school the bus is something I found at a swap meet up in Calgary. Uh, there's a fellow just doing those and he puts, does the electronics and all we do is find it, set it on the layout, and it adds some more personality to the layout. Mm. Well, that really makes it come alive. Got a little open sign here. You know, the open sign is probably the most common sign in the city but it's really hard to find in a model. So uh, that's just another uh, Alps decal on a piece of tubing and a flashing LED light behind it. Mm. Well, let's talk Colfax is a, just a great city to model because it's very compact. So you can actually do the main two blocks of downtown here on our layout and keep things fairly much to scale. So this main block of buildings we have here the signs in those buildings, which are all Alps decals, all represent a real business that has existed in Colfax sometime over the last 20 years. So there really was Madonna's classic kitchen sitting there. Um, the freight station has been there for many, many years. Today it's used for tourist attractions. Uh, they have their own railroad park. This uh, Northwestern Pacific Caboose is currently undergoing restoration and why Northwestern Pacific came up on this railroad is a question, but there it is, and they're working on it. <laughs> um, they have a gazebo, they have a hand car, they have the wigwag signal, they've done a really nice job, and these are all things we can do here on the railroad. Now, in terms of animation, um, they have a number of things. One of the things for you guys that remember your Lionel train is the animated uh, cart coming out of the baggage department there. Uh, we've got a perpetual left turn signal, and that's uh, a piece of fiber optic tubing going down through the layout, and there's a flashing LED shining through there. Mm -hmm. uh, the car lights, those are just things that you can find on eBay. Uh, we also have uh, operating uh, grade crossing signals. We'll run a train through here. And uh, the other thing we have that's taken a lot of work, and we don't know how it'll work tonight is our animated gas station over here. Um, we have a whole bunch of different things that are just sort of happening one at a time here at the gas station. Um, the garage doors raise and lower. There's a gentleman who fills his tank here. Uh, this hood will pop up. The light on the wrecker will come on. The light on the, on the back of the wrecker will come on. The, the lights here for the sign, lights inside the building, all these are individually controlled and happen in a sequential of, uh, order, and they all add a little bit of personality and things going on if you happen to be here at just the right time when these things are happening. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Sparks. What are you doing over here? Well, Sparks is our end of the line uh, of the entire railroad, really. And it's way off in the distance in terms of how we operate the railroad. And it's really an empty space wait that was waiting for something to happen. So what we're really doing here is creating scenery. And we're creating it with buildings and, and signs. So everything you're seeing back there is part of either the casino or it's a part of a fast food restaurant area and we've also created a kind of old town. All of this is fantasy, it doesn't really exist in Sparks, but it's kind of what we were able to do with the area. Mm -hmm. All the visual things that you were seeing are commercial signs. 
Uh, the casino, the A&W root beer, the shell in the background, and a couple others, those are all from Miller Engineering. Uh, Arnold's driveway here is something you can buy from Walther's. And the uh, donut with the rotating beacon, that's a Vacatronics kit, which I wired up and added to the donut just to make it a little bit more interesting. All of which is mainly to get the eye drawn into the scene in an area that would otherwise kind of be out of the way. Thanks, Steve. There are many great websites that inspire animation ideas and projects that you can try at home. Here's just a few links to get you started. First, check out the official Arduino site to see what hardware is available and how the software works. Then, go through the Arduino tutorials on YouTube put together by Jeremy Blum. Jeremy starts at the beginning teaching how the hardware and software interacts to flash lights and run motors. Next, check out the YouTube site appropriately called Arduino in Model Railroading. This site gives you some inspirational tips and examples to model. Finally, you've got to check out the Labaha site on YouTube. These Canadian modelers have a, a module railroad that usually does tours for the NMRA that's absolutely fabulous. Well, that's it for now. Now go out and build something spectacular. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.